Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's sign-out webinar from Beginner to Pro. My name is Blaška Orel, and I'm Customer Support Specialist here at Signout. And I'm also joined today by my colleague, Thea Pawlek. Hello. So before we begin with our uh, session, I will just um, mention what is our purpose of today's webinar. So we will demonstrate Signout and its basic functionalities. And then at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session. So you will be able to post your questions also uh, from the beginning of this webinar in the chat box. Just a second, let me share the screen with you right now so that you can see presentation. So if you cannot post your questions um, during the webinar on the live chat on the right side of the video player, so usually the comment area can be gray, and that is the reason why you cannot write a comment. Just simply click on your YouTube profile in the right upper corner, then click Create Account, write the information, and return to our live session. The easiest way to return to our webinar is to find it under the history, which can be found on the left sidebar of YouTube main page. So also, if you have any technical issues and questions relating to the webinar itself, you can send us an email to info at sino.net. So I'm also sharing you now the email. OK. So before we focus on the software, let me just say a few words about Synode. So Synode is an electronic lab notebook, but it's better not to think of it as a classical paper notebook. Um, it's more than a conventional note, note keeping tool. So the logic that we use to enter the research data is a bit different from the one that we use in the traditional paper notebook. So this is because Synode actually offers the possibility to manage your research projects, also to organize and divide work among the lab members, and to keep track of your day-to-day -day work. At the same time, it allows you that you can store your um, resources, like protocols, samples, reagents, lab equipment, and you can also then link them to other relevant data. So Synod is an online application, so it means that it's cloud-based, and it's currently used by 30,000 users worldwide, and many new, of course, scientists from all sorts of fields that are joining our community every day. If you don't have Synod account yet, you can start using it by creating a free cloud account, so you can sign up on our webpage. So Thea will now share a link with you on the chat. So the Synode account is completely free of charge and it's limited in some aspects, but we will focus on, on that at the end. So first, let's just go to know the software a bit better. If you're already having Synode account, so the first thing that you need to do is to log in from, your, uh, from our webpage, so the login page. You need to enter your credentials, which is your email address, your password, and then just simply click log in. Okay. So once you are logged into your Synode account, the first thing that you see is the main dashboard of your team. So in this case, my team. Basically, when you create free Synode account, you automatically create your own team. A team can represent a research group, a lab, a department, an institute, or also a company that works on common projects. So a user automatically becomes the owner of the team, but you can also be invited to other teams of other Synode users. So in this case, here at the top menu bar, I can switch to the other team, and this is called a global team switch. So in this case, I will now switch to the Synode team dashboard, so you will see that completely other projects now appear on the dashboard. So this is very useful for a case um, if you are a PI or a lab manager and you want for your uh, lab members or your students to be working on, um, on your team. 
So basically then they would be invited in your team and this project would be created by um, all, all of the team members. And here is where you would upload then your data and share all the information. But at the same time, your lab member or your student can have their own personal uh, team dashboard and also their own projects. So as a team owner, you can add other people to the team and assign them user roles. So how you can do that is that you click on your profile, then you click invite people to sign out. And here is where you would type your colleague's name. So in this case, I will just type the, uh, the name of my colleague. Then you need to check this box, invite users to my team. And from the drop down menu, you select your team. So in this case, I would select my team. And the next step is that I need to assign them a, a, a team role. So in this case, as you can see, we have three team roles, administrator, normal user, and the guest. So the administrator has the full authority when it comes to managing the team members and also the projects. Then the normal user uh, can create things, edit things, archive things within the team. And the last one, the guest, can only view things. Okay, so everything that I will show uh, from now on in terms of data will be part of the Synode team, okay? So in Synode, a team can organize the research in three main structural levels, the projects, experiments, and tasks. So this right here are the projects, these cards. Before you actually start entering your data, you need to structure your work. So Synod is general enough, so it can be used in various scientific fields, and therefore it enables you to organize your work in the way that suits your use case. So in this case, I'm going now to show you how you can create uh, a project. So you click on this green button, new project over here, and you give your project a name, let's say immunotherapy. The next is that you decide if you want to make this project visible to the entire team. So this means that it's going to be set public or just to the members of this particular project, meaning that it is private. In any case, this has nothing to do with visibility outside of your team. So you don't need to worry. Okay, we're now going to create it. And now if we look at the project, so you can see that each project has a name. So in this case, demo project has a start date. Then you have a function bar where you can see the activity on a project, all the project members, the notifications, and you can also write messages. So in order to collaborate with your team members on the project, you need to invite them to the project first. So in this case, we're going to click on the avatar icon and then we're going to click on manage users link. So over here is where you select a person. So let's say I'm going to select my colleague, Jana, and you assign them a role. So again, Synod allows you the, uh, these other project uh, uh, roles, user roles, which are at the project level, but these project roles are a bit different to the ones at the team level. So for example, Jana is a normal user in my team, but at the same time, she can be a leader of this project. Therefore, I'm going to assign her a role of an owner. And now to explain you also all of these project roles. So the owner has the full authority when it comes to the project, then the user has a less um, permissions than the owner, the technician um, can only edit certain things and the viewer can only view things within this project. So after you assign them a role, you just click add and they're added on the project. Also then, as I mentioned earlier, you can write comments. So let's say I want to now uh, remind my colleague, Hannah, and in this case, I can use smart annotations so I'm going to type at, and I will select Hannah, and I will leave her a message. Let's say, please prepare 
the project report. Okay. So Hannah will receive my message. So every project in Synode, now if I open the project, can be broken down into several experiments. These experiments can be displayed as thumbnails, as you can see, and you can sort them by the newest on for, uh, first or oldest first or also alphabetically. To create a new experiment, just click on this green button, new experiment, uh, then type the experiment name, let's say DNA cloning, and you also write the description. Once you click the create experiment, you will be redirected to the experiment canvas, which is where you enter the third structural level, so your tasks. We currently have a blank canvas, so in this case we need to click edit experiment and we will start now with creating our tasks. So in this case, just drag and drop the task on the canvas and give your task a name. So let's say host organism. The good thing is that you are not limited to, to the number of tasks, so you can create as many um, as you want them. And of course, then these tasks can be standalone units, as you can see. They can be also uh, positioned anywhere on the canvas. And if now I drag the connection between these two tasks, then basically they work a workflow. So this is especially relevant uh, when you have some dependencies between the tasks. So for example, I will create uh, a new one. Um, let's say recombinate. DNA. So for example, in this case, it makes sense that they're connected into the same workflow because I cannot prepare the cloning vector uh, first before I don't, of course, before I don't um, introduce uh, the uh, recombinant DNA into the host organism. So once you are then finished with creating your workflow, you just simply click the save button over here and your workflow is saved. Also on the left side of the experiment over you, you have the navigation bar that helps you navigate through the experiments and also tasks of the selected project. So now I will return to our qPCR experiment just to show you the workflow example. So over here we have uh, the eight tasks. And as you can see, a task also has a name, a due date, then a description, uh, the people who are assigned on the task, uh, activity, the comments, and also the samples. Then you can also label the task with specific tags. So this is here on the right upper corner. So this text can, is it's a very um, helpful feature because you can, um, for example, it can inform you about the biological material, if it's pathogenic or something, and you, to, and you need to be extra careful. So in this case, this uh, tag is in red color. So it alarms you then. As for the due date, maybe you have already noticed. So as for the due date, um, if the date, for example, is set uh, in the future and it, the date is not yet overdue, then it's going to be in the gray color normally. Then, of course, if the date is going to be due soon, it's going to be in the yellow color. And if we are already overdue, then it's going to be in red color. So this means that simply by looking at the workflow, you have an overview how the experiment is coming along. So if you're on track and so on. So I also mentioned that tasks have uh, samples assigned to them. So this is also one way how we can keep track of the samples and manage them in the samples repository, but we will check this a bit later. So when you open a task, now I will going to click on the name of the task. Here is a section where you can actually start entering your notes. 
So there are two main elements that you need to input. The first is the procedure, and then the second one are the results. So the procedure basically is your uh, protocol. So in this case, I'm just going to show you. So this protocol is consisted out of three st steps. And how you create a protocol is simply by clicking on this add new button over here. So you are creating the protocol steps as you go. And each protocol step can then also have a checklist. They can also have uh, uploaded different types of files and tables. So for example, just to scroll a bit uh, above. So over here we have a QA checklist and you can also then check, uh, mark the, the boxes. We have a uh, created table and we have also um, over here, we have an Excel and Word file. The good thing is, for example, if you don't want to be copy pasting the content of your already existing protocols, you can simply, let's say, just select the, uh, the PDF of your, or let's say oh, any other file and just then upload it. Huh, I just need to name my protocol, step number four. And then basically then, the file will be uploaded under the protocol step. So after you're finished with creating a protocol, you can save it to the repository. So in this case, you would click save to protocol repository. And this is a great thing because you can save it as a template. So others can use it and also then add any improvements. So this way you can also perform some kind of protocol versioning. In this case, I'm just going to show you where these protocols uh, are stored. So the protocols repository can be accessed here at the top menu bar. So it's the second icon. So for example, uh, of the protocol versioning would be in this case, the PCR experiment. So my colleague Katarina has created the first version and then I have just created my copy, um, as you can see and I have just renamed it as a version number two. So if you then use this protocol very often and you want to apply it, let's say on the other task, let's say data quality control here on the navigation bar, you could simply just click load protocol and then select from repository and then just choose the second, the, the better version of your protocol and you would click load. In this case, then the protocol would get uh, overwritten uh, with the current protocol in the task, but this current protocol in the task will remain unchanged in the repository, of course, if you save it uh, before. You can also share the protocols with your uh, external collaborators. So in this case, you would simply click export protocol and then you would share a file uh, via email. Then in the results section is where you would upload your results. Uh, so this, um, this, is a, here, this is a section where you can create three types of results. So the text, table, and file. So let me just give you an example. Uh, there are three types. So, so the first one is the, uh, the text result, which is basically a sequence of base pairs of a plasmid vector. Then the next one is a table, which are uh, which which represent just the calcul uh, calculated solution concentrations, and then the third one is a file, which is uh, a picture of uh, adenovirus. You can also, of course, upload uh, Microsoft Office documents, um, and since you are if you are using the cloud version, so the free sign up version, then you can also uh, edit them online. Each um, result offers you a comments field where you can then uh, also um, tag a person and let's say ask them if they can uh, check the document. Or for example, you could just refer this same result, in this case, the document, with one of the sign-up elements, so project experiments tasks, 
let's say in this case that we're going to choose a sample and you can actually link this document with this sample by clicking on this plus symbol over here. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you are now the samples. So the samples can be um, accessed here at the, um, in the task overview. So you can create each sample manually one by one, or you can simply uh, import an existing file um, of your samples. But in this case, you just need to make sure that the file is comma separated, tab separated, or an Excel file. All of these samples that are marked blue, this means that these samples, so if I now switch to this first view, this means that these samples are assigned samples. What does this mean? These samples are assigned now on the QPCR task. So if I return to the workflow overview, these are the samples that are assigned uh, on, the, uh, on the first task. And because the tasks are also connected with these arrows, basically the samples get assign assigned downstream the workflow. So in addition to this samples repository and protocols repository that I have mentioned, we also have the custom repositories. So custom repositories can be accessed here at the top menu bar in the third icon. So in custom repositories can be, for example, uh, intended for instruments, reagents, plasmids, primers, and so on. So if we now return um, to the task overview. Over here, we have the repository step where you can then, for example, assign one of the instruments, let's say the UV machine, and we're going to assign it now to the task QPCR. So this is also how you can keep track of your resources. And now the most useful feature in Synode are the reports. So the report uh, helps you um, basically to export all the data that we have just entered um, uh, in Synode. So you just need to click the new report button. Then you just follow by clicking that blue triangle. You select one of the experiments, so the entire experiment, or you can be even more selective and just uh, decide to, uh, to include the individual tasks. And then under the second step is where you choose the content. So such as the protocol, the protocol steps, the results, the activity, and so on. Afterwards, you just then click add to report. And the report is generated automatically. So since the data is organized and structured, um, Synop can easily extract the data. And as you can see, it looks like a PDF. So you can also then, um, you can see that here are the pictures and the comments. Uh, here is an example of the result, which is an R script. Uh, you can also then decide to exclude these certain sections, um, or you can move them up and down. And then you can save the report in Synode. You can export it as a PDF and share it with your colleagues, or you can print it out directly and take it with you uh, to the lab. OK. Um, I also uh, will now just uh, quickly go through what we have uh, learned about Synode. So now I will click on the uh, logo so that we will return to the main dashboard. So just to summarize, um, as a Synode user, you can have your own team. So in this case, Blaska team, but you can also be part of other teams as well. Then within a team, um, you can create projects and within a project, you create experiments. An experiment can have uh, one or uh, multiple tasks that can be connected and form a workflow, or they can be a standalone unit. 
You can also then use the navigation bar here on the left, or you can also use the breadcrumbs here um, above the canvas. Uh, for those who are doing the same tasks and are using the same protocols in more than one experiment, you can create experiment templates uh, to save uh, your time. And of course, also in every text field, you can use the smart annotations to tag your colleagues or to refer to one of the sign out elements, such as samples, tasks, experiments, and projects. Okay, uh, I also just forgot to mention that you can use the search function. So this is also um, one of the features. So let's say we're now going to search for the RNA. So the search function is a very powerful uh, feature because it also searches through the content of the attached files. So in this case, um, um, the sign out will list you the search result into and it will um, gather them into different segments that represent different sign out elements. And as I mentioned, they also can be found in the attached files. Let me just refresh that. Okay. So these are the features that, um, that are part of the free sign out version. There are also some features that we haven't showed you today. And these are the ones uh, that are part of our payable plans. So let's just take a quick look uh, at a comparison chart between the plans that we offer. So as you can see, we have the free version, which has no trial uh, stage. And then there are two payable plans available. One is called Academia and the other one is called Industry. So the free plan has limitations when it comes to storage space, the number of allowed teams and repositories, as well as our support service. Then the Academia and the Industry enable you to have sign out hosted on a private cloud, which guarantees the faster and smoother usage of sign out as well as the possibility of local installation or local backup. In these payable plans, you have also a possibility of unlimited number of teams, and you can also pick how much storage space you would need. So the starting amount is one terabyte. Another difference is that the free plan only offers five customer repositories, while you can have, one, uh, while you can have more on the payable plans. There is also the difference in the support service that we offer. So in, in case of academia and industry, um, you uh, receive the uh, onboarding, which is the training of users, and also the key account manager. Now, the main difference between the academia and industry is compliance. So the industry plan includes features and add-ons that can help you meet regulatory requirements. Uh, such as 21 CFR Part 11, and also GLP and HIPAA compliance. So the features that are therefore included are the electronic signatures, uh, the e-witnessing, system log records, and also detailed audit trails. The Academia plan, however, does not have those features. And on top of that, uh, we also offer site license possibilities for larger organizations. So the pricing is based per user. However, the exact price for the package depends on all different variables and uh, quantity of the certain features you would need. Uh, if you are not sure which plan would be best for you, and if you would like to know more about the prices, you can schedule a free consultation meeting with our key account manager. So Theo will now share the link with you. And if you schedule the meeting today, uh, you will receive a 20% discount on any of these premium plans. So that is academia or, or industry. 
Um, if you follow the link, you can choose a time slot um, and you can then uh, meet our key account manager and get all the information about the premium plans. Otherwise, you can also send us a query to our mail uh, premium at sino.net. Okay, so this was now half an hour of our presentation. Uh, this basically sums up uh, all the core functionalities and also our plans. So we are now open for any questions that you may have. Um, so let's see what you have been writing to us during the webinar. Okay, hello everyone from my side as well. We've, we are very glad you joined us during this webinar and hope you will keep in touch afterwards as well. Our team is here for you to answer all questions you might have now or later on. So the first question we got is, does Synode create audit trail if someone in the team makes changes to data? So the answer is yes, actually, you can have a basic version of this within the Synode free account, which means that activity of every user is recorded in Synode. You can see date, time, and the description of every action done by each user. So Blaska will show it to you now. Uh, you can just give her a moment and you will see what it looks like. Um, so the activity is right on the top of your screen and when you click on it, you can see the date, the time and the detailed description of every action done in the system. So um, in addition to that, if you would need detailed audit trails, there is a sign out industry plan which offers this additional functionality. So this additional functionality gives you a more detailed overview. You can select which record type you want to see, projects, experiments, tasks, samples from which time periods, and go further on into detail. Uh, so I hope this answers the question. Um, another question we got was uh, whether the software was validated for GLP compliance, and if so, external or internal. Now, this question really depends on your organization within the lab as well. Software itself, with its many functionalities, can support the actions taken within the lab to be GLP compliant. Um, so we would be more than happy to talk to you directly and go through your specific use case and answer in great detail in which ways Synode can support your lab's GLP compliance. Uh, in general, Synode supports most of the needs from GLP compliant labs, but we really love to give the as detailed answers as, po as possible. So I would really like to encourage you again to uh, send us an email to the support or premium at Synode email and um, either talk to us directly or uh, specify in an email exactly what you would like a sign out to cover within your lab in terms of GLP and we will be more than happy to answer it. Um, okay, now Blaska, you want to take another one? Yeah, I think, okay, so we received also a question, will sign out provide smartphone app in the future? Uh, so we uh, currently uh, Synod is design, designed in a way that it's uh, um, um, mobile friendly. So you can like create a shortcut um, and uh, like have a quick access from your phone. But we have not designed a dedicated app. So to answer your question, if we are planning, we have this in mind, but not in the very near future. Then the next question. Is it compatible with ChemDraw? Um, we actually have uh, have received a lot of uh, um, um, proposals to also have some kind of a chemical add-on or let's say add-on for, for chemists. So in this case, the ChemDraw is actually one of our, um, let's say, uh, um, software that we want to follow their structure, their design. And it's not going, so sign up, it's not going to be uh, integrated with KimDraw, but we're going to develop our own chemistry add-on. And this is already uh, happening. So, okay, maybe to just, 
explain a bit further, compatible with KimDraw, I think that you could um, upload the final results from the KimDraw uh, in Sino, but they are not like integrated. Then the next question, um, do you have cap capability for randomizing the animal numbers for experiments? Um, no, unfortunately we don't have, uh, but this is uh, a very great idea. Actually, we haven't received this uh, suggestion yet, so uh, we're actually we're going to have it in mind. Um, can we connect Sinon to instruments directly to record data, for an example, balances and pH meters? Uh, so the premium Synod version also um, um, can entail the integrations with the software that you already use, or in this case, the lab equipment that you use. But this is then, of course, um, the software development, and um, it's something that uh, you can talk to our uh, um, key account manager, or you can just send us a query to the premium at sino.net. It's much easier than if we have like a short meeting and that we can discuss what kind of software do you use? What kind of equipment do you use? Um, how, how much data do you produce so that we can then have an actual uh, better overview and that we can also give you an estimate what this would mean in terms of development and the pricing, of course. But everything is possible. Uh, can I work offline and actualize it later or internet connection is needed at any time? Uh, this is a great qu uh, question from Javier. So um, the, demonstra the demonstration was basically done um, that I presented on with the free sign-up version. So the free sign-up version is cloud-based. So it means that you need to have the internet connection at all times. Uh, but of course, um, for example, if if you are allowed to have, uh, I don't know, a, a mobile phone or a tablet uh, with you uh, in a lab, you can, uh, let's say, uh, take a picture uh, of your results of your experiment and then just upload it later on. But of course, if you decide to go with the premium, then um, you can have Synode locally installed, which it means that you don't need the uh, internet connection at all times. Okay, and we've got another idea about the smartphone app. Um, so I guess Blaska mentioned as well earlier on. So for now, yes, you, I mean, you can use Synode on all mobile devices. It has been designed in a way that it will adjust to every screen. Um, but for the further development of the app is still, um, we will see what happens, right? Uh, okay, another one. The internet speed is unbearable sometimes. Can I install Sino to local server and, server and serve through intranet? Is it difficult? Well, it actually really depends. So there are two options, right? Sino as a software in general has been designed in an open source way. So if uh, you are using the free version and if you are sticking with the free version, uh, there is a possibility for you to try and do it on your own. The instructions are available on GitHub. Uh, so if you have IT knowledge or a, a team or a colleague who could help you out with this, you can definitely try. Um, otherwise, uh, a local installation, again, is uh, available within the payable plans. So. Uh, that would be about it. And the difficulty of it, it really depends on your skills. So for some labs, it proved to be quite easy. For some, uh, there were some issues. So we help them out. Uh, if uh, at any time you encounter any problems, you can always reach out to our team. Uh, okay, the next one. If software, either operating system or sign out software crashes for uncontrolled reasons, how are the data is recovered? Do you save a duplicate copy on cloud? Um, so the thing is that uh, when you're entering data in Synod, you actually have 
quite at each step or at each action that you take, you have a save button. I know that it can happen, of course, uh, before clicking the button that, uh, that for some reason the, the internet crashes and then the, the latest update is not saved. So this is something that, um, that uh, we don't have power over it, but like overall, um, everything that you save in Synod is safely stored on our Amazon cloud. And you can also then export the data uh, through the reporting feature. And the premium plans then, of course, um, has then also these other uh, features that enables you to uh, export the data. Um, and of course, if we, you have then the local version of Synode, then uh, there are also then um, additional uh, backups that are done then from also your IT department. Um, okay, so another one, does it generate sample barcodes then can be printed for keeping an inventory? So basically, uh, what you can do in Synode is that you can create your own inventories within Synode. So basically, uh, if you look at the screen that Blaschka is showing now, and you have your barcodes, you can just add another column, create it, or just choose one from the list that is available, mm -hmm. and just create your own column, which would say barcodes. Um, so now what you can do here is either upload your list of samples together with the barcodes, type them in if you like, and um, it is probably the one of the most convenient ways on how you could save your bar barcodes within Synode as well. Um, so I hope this answers the question. You can create different custom inventories. So you have samples, protocols, instruments, reagents, um, things that you're using. And also if I may add, so currently the, the sample repository is um, so the fields are only text field, right? So it means that you can only uh, 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 type in uh, the text or or let's say you can copy paste uh, the hyperlink in this case. So if you would like to also, I don't know, let's say include a picture of the sample, which can at one at, uh, also be the, the barcode, let's say, but this barcode is saved on your uh, cloud storage then you could just copy paste the link. So this is now the workaround that I'm explaining. But also what I wanted to add is that we are now um, changing this uh, sample repository and other repositories as well to um, design them uh, to be more flexible and let's say even more smarter. So in this case, you will have a possibility to actually add a picture or a barcode information right next to uh, individual sample in this case. Uh, okay, now the next one, um, it would be great to be able to generate 96 well or 384 well microplate or box templates for sample archival or ex experiment planning. So actually, uh, this is a very interesting question as well. Uh, so one, there are actually two products um, that work in this way. So one of the products that we could recommend here is called Plater. Uh, we can share the links in this chat as well. So Plater actually comes together with a software installed on a tablet computer and it uh, allows you to create your pipetting plans. 496 well and 384 well plates both it also comes with a holder for the microplate which you can place directly on the tablet and it guides you with the lights while you are pipetting so we can definitely share more information on that uh, in this chat box as well as um, the product which is coming up is actually directly connected to Synode so one of our partnering companies and uh, is Gilson Inc. Uh, Gilson is one of the biggest pipette and liquid handling uh, instruments producer. So Gilson uh, and Synod both together created the connected solutions for laboratories, which means that 
for uh, now, there will be available Trackman, a new generation of Trackman Connected, which is a product that allows you just that. Once you are logged into Synode, you can use it together with the Trackman that works on the tablet, connects to the pipette with the Bluetooth as well, and kind of brings in another dimension of of uh, pipetting and planning your pipetting plans and so on. So we will share this information as well. Okay, so our webinar has come to an end. Um, so we would like to thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed uh, the webinar, that it was uh, informative and that uh, you have learned something new. So if you have any struggles with Synod or have any other questions, uh, please visit our support webpage. Um, so there we'll also share the link with you or just send us an email to support at synod.net. So thank you once again, and uh, hopefully you will um, find Synod uh, useful in your lab and that you will share among your uh, lab members. Have a great day. Bye.